Welcome back to the Reverend Line. Today we are diving into one of the most advanced, most controversial, and most talked about unmanned aerial systems in the world. This is the MQ-9 Reaper, the military drone that has come to define modern warfare. In 2025, this drone is not only still flying, but it's evolving with new capabilities, new missions, and a bigger role in the global balance of power. So buckle up, because we're going to explore the history, the design, the technology, the missions, and the future of this drone, and by the end of this video you'll have a deeper understanding of why the Reaper has become such a game changer for the United States and its allies. The MQ-9 Reaper didn't appear out of nowhere. Its roots go back to the earlier Predator drone, which was first introduced in the 1990s. The Predator was designed for surveillance and reconnaissance, but it quickly became clear that adding weapons to drones could fundamentally change how wars were fought. The Reaper was introduced as the Predator's bigger, faster, more lethal successor. It officially entered service with the U.S. Air Force in 2007. Since then, it has been used in multiple conflicts across the Middle East, Africa, and beyond. And here we are in 2025, almost two decades later, with the Reaper still central to U.S. air operations. Now let's talk about what makes the MQ-9 Reaper stand out. First, the design. This isn't a small quadcopter like the consumer drones you might see on YouTube. The Reaper is huge. It has a wingspan of 66 feet which is almost as wide as some regional passenger planes. It's powered by a Honeywell turboprop engine that gives it a cruising speed of around 230 miles per hour. That might not sound fast compared to a fighter jet, but the Reaper doesn't need speed. What it needs is endurance. And endurance is exactly what it delivers. The Reaper can stay in the air for more than 27 hours at a time making it perfect for long surveillance missions, border patrols, or tracking high-value targets. This endurance means fewer takeoffs, fewer landings, and fewer gaps in coverage. It's a silent watcher that can follow a target all day and all night. The Reaper is not just a strike drone. It's a flying intelligence platform. The information it provides often becomes the backbone of military planning. So how does it actually work in practice? Unlike a fighter jet with a pilot in the cockpit, the Reaper is flown remotely by a crew that might be thousands of miles away. A typical crew consists of a pilot, who controls the drone's flight, and a sensor operator, who manages the cameras and targeting systems. They operate from ground control stations in places like Nevada, where the drones live feed streams in real time. Satellites relay the control signals, which is why the Reaper can fly halfway around the world while being piloted from U.S. soil. This setup keeps human pilots out of direct danger, while still allowing them to make critical decisions. The missions of the MQ-9 Reaper have evolved since its early days. In the late 2000s and 2010s, it was mostly known for counterterrorism strikes in Afghanistan. Pakistan, Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. It became a symbol of America's drone wars, praised for its precision but criticized for civilian casualties and the ethical questions around targeted killings. In 2025, its role has expanded. The Reaper is now being adapted for maritime surveillance, border patrol, and even electronic warfare. With the rise of near-peer competitors like China and Russia, the U.S. military is upgrading the Reaper with better sensors, anti-jamming technology, and new data links to survive in contested environments. Some variants are even being equipped with the ability to control smaller drones, acting as a mothership in the sky. One of the biggest upgrades in recent years is artificial intelligence. The Reaper of 2025 is benefiting from machine learning algorithms that help operators sift through massive amounts of data. Instead of watching hours of video footage, 
analysts can now rely on AI to flag suspicious activity, track moving objects automatically, and even suggest potential threats. This speeds up decision making and makes the drone more efficient. While the Reaper is still piloted by humans, AI is becoming a co pilot in the background, sharpening the system's eyes and ears. Another area of growth is allied use. The MQ 9 Reaper isn't just an American asset anymore. Countries like the United Kingdom, France, Italy, Spain, and India have purchased or leased Reapers. NATO partners are integrating them into joint missions, sharing data, and building a more connected network of drones across the globe. This makes the Reaper not only a US tool, but part of a broader Western military strategy. But let's not ignore the controversies. The Reaper has always been surrounded by debate. Critics argue that drone strikes can lead to civilian casualties, inflame anti-American sentiment, and blur the line between war and peace. Because drone pilots operate from thousands of miles away, some people worry that war has become too easy to wage, with less risk for those pulling the trigger. Supporters argue the opposite, saying that drones reduce the need to send soldiers into dangerous environments, and that precision strikes save lives compared to traditional bombing runs. In 2025, these debates haven't gone away. If anything, they've grown more complicated as drones become more common around the world. Speaking of that, competition is heating up. The United States no longer has a monopoly on drones. Countries like China, Turkey, and Iran are producing their own armed drones, some of which are being exported to conflict zones. The Reaper set the standard, but now it is rivals. That's why the US is already working on the Reaper's eventual replacement, such as the MQ Next program, which aims to create stealthier, faster, more survivable drones for high threat environments. Still, the Reaper is far from obsolete. It remains reliable, cost effective, and proven in combat. So, what does the future look like for the MQ 9 Reaper? The answer is a mix of continuity and transition. The drone will likely continue flying well into the 2030s, upgraded with new technology to stay relevant. It will support U.S. forces in counterterrorism, intelligence gathering, and deterrence missions. But at the same time, it will be a bridge toward the next generation of unmanned systems. The lessons learned from the Reaper are how to integrate drones into command structures, how to balance human decision making with machine assistance, and how to navigate the ethical challenges of remote warfare will shape the future of aerial combat. To put it simply, the MQ-9 Reaper is more than just a drone. It's a symbol of the 21st century battlefield. It represents both the promise and the peril of new technology. It shows how machines can extend human reach, reduce risk, and deliver precise power, but it also forces us to ask tough questions about accountability, transparency, and the very nature of war. Love it or hate it, the Reaper has left its mark on history. And here we are in 2025, watching a drone that has been in service for nearly two decades continue to dominate the skies. It's not flashy like a stealth fighter. It's not fast like a supersonic bomber. But it's dependable, versatile, and deadly when called upon. That's why the MQ-9 Reaper remains one of the most important tools in the US military's arsenal. Thanks for watching the Reverend Line. If you found this deep dive into the MQ-9 Reaper interesting, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more videos, and let me know in the comments what other military technology you want me to cover next. Until next time, stay sharp, and keep your eyes on the horizon.